This week's book of the week is Winning the Unforgivable Race to Greatness by Tim Grover. As you can see, man, I purchased this book when the homie dropped the shit. I was one of the first persons to get it because I'm a big fan of Tim. His last book, Relentless, had a huge impact on me. I mean, his first book, Relentless, had a huge impact on me. In fact, I tattooed him on my fucking arm like a psycho, crazy person, maniac. Tim, he knows a thing or two about winning, right? He was a trainer for Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. I guess we could we could stop there, but we'll keep going. Uh, um, <laughs> Gilbert Arenas, uh, Dwayne Wade, uh, and, and many, many others. Right. But most notably, Jordan and Kobe. Right. And this is a better book than Relentless, but I like Relentless better. You get what I'm saying? Kind of like the way, you know, you might like, you know, a steak from a uh, a high-end restaurant is better than a burger, but sometimes you just like a burger better, right? This is that kind of thing, <laughs> you know, like it's objectively a better book. It was written far better. It has more structure, but I still like Relentless better, right? So just keep that in mind. This is the best. The other is my favorite, right? But this is a good book. I just kind of want to go through some of the takeaways I got from reading this book. And I think you should you should check it out. I think you, you, you're going to find it super helpful. So there's 13 principles that Tim broke down in the book, right? And he always uses the number 13 in his books because to prove he doesn't believe in luck or some shit like that. I like that though. The first principle that Tim wrote down was winning makes you different and being different scares people. That really resonated with me because, you know, when you start moving down the path, especially if you're doing anything entrepreneurial or anything outside of the norm, there's going to be people who see what you're doing they're gonna be like oh you're weird or you need to chill or they'll they'll kind of try to like bring you back in to be more like them oh you're doing too much even if you get into just fitness right if you get really into fitness you start tracking your macros and they're like oh man that's too much don't do that don't do that right they're gonna see you being different they'll try to dissuade you from pursuing that path the way you're pursuing it it's super important critical vital imperative that you don't give a fuck about what those people are saying even if those people are your parents girlfriend wife fucking kids it's critical that you stay on your path if you know you're doing the right thing as long as you're not hurting nobody nobody's being damaged the fact that you're doing something outside of the norm people will try to dissuade you from doing that immediately so i remember just when i first started getting in the fitness for real you know people around me family members or even friends you know it was like oh man you could just eat some of this man eat some of this man oh man you ain't got to do that all the time you can just do this man you can do that i'm a g right so i didn't give a fuck about what they was talking about but i know a lot of people will fall victim to that right and they were like ah, all right okay it's all right that should have fucked you up and i'm gonna explain why in a minute but it may be a diet thing or a fitness goal or it may be, you know, your business, you know, say you're working on your business or you're working on some goal when you got to put in long hours and be like, ah, just take it easy. Live a little, man. Ah, man, just live a little. You got to you. You could take one day off. You could take you could stop now. You cannot listen to these people when they do this shit. A hundred percent. You can't listen to these people because imagine a rocket ship trying to go out in space, right? A NASA rocket ship. I don't know what SpaceX and those other companies, they on some blue orgasm or whatever Jeff Bezos got going on, like all the other shit I'm talking about, like regular NASA. When one of those shuttles goes in the atmosphere, it has these two huge fuel tanks, right? Because it needs a tremendous amount of energy to leave the atmosphere. But once it gets out the atmosphere, then what it does, it lets those fuel tanks go and then it can coast a little bit. The reason I bring that up, because starting is the hardest part. Once you start making some headway, then you will be able to go off momentum once you get momentum. If you keep stopping, keep quitting, or giving into temptation, what happens is you may be thinking, oh, I can just do it this one time or I can quit this one time or I don't have to do this one time. No, no, no. What's happening is you're quitting for a second and then you have to restart tomorrow. You have to do the hardest part over again, right? So when you say, oh, I just won't do my diet today or I can eat this now, understand you're restarting your diet tomorrow. You're doing the hardest part over again. When it comes to diet or when it comes to any sort of bad habits you're trying to break, anything you're trying to abstain from, abstinence is easier than moderation. You know, because moderation, you're kind of teasing yourself with this shit. Oh, I can just cheat on my diet today or I can take today off. You're teasing yourself with these, with this other shit, right? But if you just said, I don't take days off, right? If you just said, uh, no, I just don't eat that. That's actually easier 
than teasing yourself with this shit every blue moon. Because when you give in to the temptation, here's what happens. Everything you do is habit form. So you feel the temptation, you feel the social pressure, you feel all these things that are drawing you towards something you sh- kind of really shouldn't be doing as it pertains to accomplishing your goals. When you give in to that, it's easier to give in to that next time, like significantly easier. You, won't, you probably won't even need as much pressure to eat the fucking candy cakes or whatever your fucking daughter is eating. It's easier to quit once you start quitting. Make no mistake. You're not taking a break. You're not cheating. It's no, no, no. You're quitting. <laughs> for a second then you have to start over again and that's why most of y'all fat and fat losers now i don't mean that in a negative way <laughs> i just mean that objectively like the average american has less than a thousand dollars in the bank account and is 17 pounds overweight fat losers right and this is the main reason the number one fucking culprit because they keep giving up they keep giving in to these little temptations they think is nothing no you have to start over for example when i quit drinking alcohol i didn't have no problem drinking alcohol i wasn't like drunk like your mama i just didn't feel like it was in line with my goals and i just quit I like i quit quit it wasn't oh i'm a social drinker oh i just drink sometimes you know new year's eve no, i just don't drink alcohol people's like oh you can just have one drink oh just try this just a, you know and nah i just i just don't drink and it's super easy it's easier to just abstain from it i just don't do that no more but that's people are going to feel weird about it you just can't give into the temptation I'm gonna go through a few of these rules. I'll probably spend a little bit more time on that one than I should have, but that's because I took a shitload of caffeine before this. Enough caffeine to kill a baby. And that caffeine is surging through my bloodstream. It's working its way to my adrenal gland. I've kind of taken over this episode of this podcast. I'm not necessarily in control. I'm trying to keep this shit on the rails to the best of my ability with varying degrees of success. That's one of the other rules I like was he says, this is going to be difficult for a lot of you guys to comprehend. And a lot of you guys are not going to want to hear this or accept this. But rem- remember, this is the guy who trained Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. And he's talking about winning. Maybe you should listen to him instead of your dumb ass self. Unless you know more about the winning than the nigga who trained Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Shut the fuck up. He says, winning wants all of you. There is no balance. There is no balance. I hear a lot of this shit, work-life balance. You got to be balanced, all this other shit. That's cool if you don't want massive success. If you just want to be a regular guy, do a regular shit, fucking regular bitches until you die, then balance, balance works, right? Perfectly balanced life would be, would look something like this, right? You know, you work eight hours, sleep eight hours and then you fucking you have fun the fucking other eight hours it's totally split down the middle you know that's what most people do they work uh, around eight hours sleep around eight hours and they spend the rest of the hours having fun like enjoying life man you know what I'm saying getting high scooby-doo whatever the fuck right and you're not gonna be able to do that and and, and, and accomplish extreme success you if you want to do a, be a regular guy doing regular shit fucking regular hoes then yeah that that's cool that, that makes a lot of sense but if you want massive success if you want extreme success how can extreme success be accomplished without extreme action if i told you you could have an extreme result and you didn't need extreme action for it to happen wouldn't that sound fucking ludicrous, insane, bonkers, outrageous? Because it is. That shit don't even happen in the movies. Like, that shit don't even happen in Hollywood. Batman was not balanced, right? They don't even make fucking movies about motherfuckers achieving extreme success on accident or strolling their way to fucking be a mayor. That shit don't even happen in the movies. Even whores gotta fuck some ugly old motherfucker until he dies that's extreme sucking old dick till the motherfucker dies that's extreme even whores gotta go hard they gotta get plastic surgery mutilate their body do all types of shit and you think you can just be all balanced and be a multi-millionaire whores can't even do that so what it's going to look like to be extremely successful according to tim grover is probably going to have to look a lot more like this if we were being honest <laughs> you know where you're going to spend most of your waking hours chasing victory instead of chasing dopamine you know and listen you don't have to sacrifice your family that's the one thing that's a misnomer you don't have to sacrifice your family you can still spend time with your family. It's like what you what you have to sacrifice is all the other bullshit you do, right? Think about my how much you know. I hear this all the time. Man, well, I still got to spend time with my family. Family's most important thing. Family, family, family. Shut up, nerd. It's okay. Spend all the time you want with your family, right? 
Here's the thing. You don't spend all the time you have with your family. You're still watching Netflix. You're still fucking playing video games. You're still jerking off, right? You're doing a bunch of other bullshit. That's the stuff you have to sacrifice. I'm not telling you to neglect your kids and miss birthday parties and shit. Nobody's telling you to do that, dummy. And here's the thing. Your fucking kids don't have fucking 40 hours a week to spend with your goofy ass. Right. These motherfuckers have to sleep. Children have to sleep like 10 hours a night. And then they have fucking school, after school programs, homework, their own fucking friends. They don't have 40 hours a week to spend with your goofy ass and they wouldn't want to spend it with all of it with you if they had. You want to do kid shit for 40 hours a day and kids don't want to do grown up shit for 40 hours a day. You don't have to say spend the same amount of time you're spending with kids now to stop doing all the other shit. I just didn't go to the movies. I didn't watch TV. I didn't watch sports, no basketball, no football. And I'm black. You know how difficult that was for me? And then I don't know what was happening in pop culture. I didn't know all the latest rap songs. Little so-and-so and young so-and-so. I was just focused head down for a few years. Now I'm super rich, successful, and handsome. It was no balance. I still slept eight hours. So you're going to have to plan shit in your calendar. I talk about that in other videos. This is just a snippet what's going on in this book. Incredible book. Some of the other chapters in this book, uh, Tim says that, you know, winning never lies. It's kind of like what they said in the Bible, by by your fruits, you shall know them, right? You know what I'm saying? You either win or you lose, right? We know what, we're going to know what happens when we looked at the results. And in sports, you can go hard and still lose. But in life, life's not binary, right? You know, everybody can win in, in life, right? In sports, there can only be one champion. Sports is harder than life. Like life, you know, you can be successful. Again, some asshole's going to say, not everybody can be rich. Of course, dummy. Not everybody's even going to fucking try. How do I know that? Because Netflix stock is hitting all time highs. <laughs> that's how I know that. You motherfuckers ain't trying. You're doing other shit. You're doing other shit. And that's cool. I definitely think you should read this book. I'll put the link in the description. It's, it's a better book than Relentless, but I still like Relentless better. But that's a personal thing. I think this is objectively a better book. The link is in the description. Winning by the big homie, Tim Grover.